In this video, we're going to talk about how the sampling distribution is used to build up a hypothesis test. Okay, we're going to do it in the context of um, one single mean or one numeric variable. So remember, we learned a bit about the sampling distribution. And this helped describe, if we know the truth for a population, what's the probability of certain things showing up when we collect a sample of data? So let's take a look at this example here. Suppose that we know the systolic blood pressure in a population is skewed with a mean of 125 and a standard deviation of 20. We learned previously that the sampling distribution of the mean, right, this theoretical set of all the possible estimates we could end up with, is going to be approximately normal as long as a few conditions are met. Um, with a mean of 125 and a standard deviation of the mean, okay, or standard error of the mean of 4. Right, and again, this tells us on average how far should our sample mean move from the truer population mean. Okay, and again, on average. It's not quite the mathematical average, but close enough. So let's work out a probability here. When we take a sample of 25 observations, what's the prob probability of getting a sample mean greater or equal to 135? So this is what we want to work out here. Right? If we know the mean's 125, what's the probability in a sample of 25 observations we get a sample mean of 135 or more? We saw that this is approximately normal, so we can first start by standardizing. We can find out how far is that sample mean from the population's mean in terms of the standard deviation of the mean. We care what we're going to call a standard error of the mean as soon as we start dealing with um, samples and not knowing the population. Okay. In our example, how far is 135 from the population of mean of 125 divided by the standard error? Okay. And this comes out to 2.5. Okay. So getting a sample mean of 135 is getting an estimate that's two and a half standard deviations of the mean above what we'd expect, okay, the population mean. We learned that we can think of this standardizing as just being a unit conversion. So rather than looking at units of blood pressure, we're looking at units of standard deviation. So this 135 is two and a half standard deviations of the mean above the mean. Okay. Or if you prefer to just redraw this out, looking on Z, the standard normal, we want to find what's the area above two and a half. Now, I'll just look the throw up the results there. If you look this up in a table, you're going to find out, okay, or if you find it using software, comes out to about 0.006, or roughly 0.6%, or 6 in 1,000. Okay, so let's write that out. What we're finding here is that the population mean is 125, the probability of getting an estimate, okay, or a sample mean, greater or equal to 135 is only 6 in 1,000, okay, or 0.6%. This is living in that pretend world where we're going from knowing the truth about the population to asking about what happens when we collect a sample of data. Okay. Now we're going to look at how does this concept get used to reverse the direction of this arrow. Let's say, given our sample of data, what statements can we make about the population? Let's suppose for the moment, okay, we're going to build a bridge here, that we're dealing with a sample rather than a population. For individuals who smoke, we think that their mean systolic blood pressure is going to be greater than 125, okay, that healthy mean. Okay. 
Okay, or in other words, we're looking at a population of smokers. We believe that their mean systolic blood pressure should be larger than the mean of 125, which we're supposing is known as the mean systolic blood pressure pressure for a healthy population. So we reach into this population and we take a sample of 25 smokers. And we find the sample mean for these 25 individuals is 135. And let's just suppose now, so we can stay consistent, the sample standard deviation came out to be 20. What we're doing here is laying the foundation for a hypothesis test. So, if smoking does not increase the solid blood pressure, we expect the sample mean to come out to be about 125. We hypothesize that it should be a little bit larger. So, we're going to start with what we call a null hypothesis, okay. H0, and that's that the mean for smokers is the same as a healthy population versus an alternative that the mean for smokers is greater than 125. Okay. So we start by assuming that this population of smokers is no different than the healthy population. Now we're going to see with this null an alternative. Okay, in a separate video, we're going to um, expand more on hypothesis testing. So we'll fill in a lot of the details um, after this. But by um, starting with this null hypothesis, okay, and we're going to assume this to be true. So assume smokers are no different until we end up convinced otherwise. Okay. Rather than knowing that the population mean is 125, we're going to assume. Okay. Or we can say if. If the population mean is 125, right? If the smokers are no different than the healthy population, what's the probability of seeing what we saw show up in our sample? We can go through and run through the exact same calculation. Things that are going to change is rather than knowing the um, population standard deviation, we're going to have to sub in our estimate of it. Okay. Because of that, we're going to have to use a T distribution rather than the Z, although we'll see T and Z are approximately the same. Okay, I like to think of the T distribution as being the normal distribution for samples. We're going to label this mu naught. Okay, rather than knowing the population mean, it's the hypothesized value for it. This thing here, okay, the 6%, we're going to call it the p-value. But it's a probability we've already learned how to work out, and we'll just start to give it that name in the context of hypothesis testing. Okay, so rather than saying the population mean is 125, right, assuming, okay, assuming the population mean is 125, right, assuming our null hypothesis is true, the probability of seeing an estimate like this show up, or one even more extreme, is only going to happen about six in a thousand times. So this is the foundation for hypothesis testing. In later videos, we'll build it up a bit more formally. We'll start to label some of these parts a bit more. So I guess worth noting this here, again, is what we're going to call the p-value. And in following videos, we'll start to fill in all these details a bit more formally. Thanks for watching our video. Subscribe to our channel. Like our videos. Share our videos. Statistics is almost as beautiful as a unicorn. Statistics is hard to say, Poopally. And I'll sign up, Poopally. Okay.